apart from that unexpected challenge. Another unexpected challenge I had was preparing for this TEDx talk. I didn't realize when I walked to the wardrobe, I was going to look inside and pull out an outfit for the talk, and I realized it was made of plastic. And then I pulled the next one out, and it was also made of plastic, and I had the best intentions of wearing something cotton, and in the end, here I am, a girl standing in front of 650 people, wearing my plastic suit. And the irony of it is, I'm here to talk about the plastic problem. I was always an ardent recycler. I always loved plastic, and I never saw it as a bad thing. Until one day, I was speaking to a friend of mine, Ivana, she's also in the plastic industry, and she turned to me and she said, do you know we touch plastic more than we touch our loved ones? Call me soft-hearted, I am, I'm a huge empath. Tears welled up in my eyes, and it sunk in. I realized at that point, we eat from it, we wear it, we sleep on it. We eat out of plastic lunch boxes using plastic cutlery. Our disposable coffee cups are even made of plastic. Our mattresses may be made of plastic, and our pillows and pajamas may be made of plastic of polyester or nylon. And we hold our phones that are covered in plastic. It made me wonder how in this lifetime I could change that. I then read this article in CNN News. They spoke about a study that showed that we are now eating, drinking, and breathing plastic, to the point that we are now consuming five grams of plastic. That's an equivalent of the size of a credit card. And yes, I have been keeping this in here for the entire day, and it is so uncomfortable. <laughs> but we are literally consuming five grams of plastic each week. Now, do me a favor. When you head through to the store next time and you pull out your credit card, Imagine eating 52 of these in a year. We do not have the space in our wallets or our handbags to carry 52, let alone our bodies. I shudder to think what it's doing to our children. For example, I make my daughter's tea every morning, and we, most of you might have seen the article about tea bags being covered in plastic or made of plastic. I quickly changed that. But it just made me realize that the problem was really, really huge. The title of my talk, Plastic, A Toxic Love Story. If this is one of the greatest love stories of the past 100 years, then why is it not leaving me warm, loved, and with butterflies in my stomach? I don't know about you, but I'd love for the story to have a happily ever after ending. Let me take you back a few years. Yep, that's me, got my Wellington boots on, my husband's in the background there, and that's my little daughter, Ava, she's eight years old now. John and Ava, they come with me for walks along the Dodder River in Dublin, and they fish for underwater treasures with giant magnets, and I fish for the floating kind. In fact, there was this one time I caught this, almost caught this really, really, really large plastic bottle, but sadly, it got away. And as I watched this plastic bottle floating down the river, I had this realization. Here I was, standing in the river, Wellington boots, downstream, literally and figuratively, and I was trying to pick up some of the eight million tons of plastic heading towards the ocean. Eight million tons, that's huge. Already, there's 150 million tons of plastic in the ocean. And it made me wonder how in my lifetime, and this fire in my belly, I could make sure that this little one had the luxury of tasting the cleanest water 
or being able to walk on a beach that was plastic free. And we're not able to do this at this point in Dublin. We live near a beach and we have to wear our gloves and our Wellington boots because the, the water is highly, highly polluted and toxic. And it saddens me that we actually have to go through that. I also was hoping that she could one day swim in the ocean next to fish that weren't filled with plastic. I woke up with a jolt around my plastic addiction and I realized that I had to do something about it. So you may be wondering why am I here talking about this? I'm an entrepreneur. Like, you know, how did, how did I make this link? So just a little bit of background. I come from South Africa. I was born there, moved to Dublin. But in South Africa, I was always an entrepreneur. Um, even when I was a kid, I was always problem solving. I was creating inventions to solve problems and get solutions to everything. I drove my parents mad with every invention I created. I've been through a number of startups, successfully helped grow them from ground up, built them up and sold them. Um, four of those were successful mergers and exits, and the remainder were just some smaller companies. Beginning of the year, I realized that I was focusing on projects that I actually wasn't really super excited about. So I sat down and um, in January, it was the 3rd of January, I was writing my goals down. I'm a very good goal, goal setter and I dream really big. And I said, okay, what, what do I love? And what do I have a problem with? I love the ocean. I've always wanted to be a marine conservationist as a kid. Never did because I went and studied accounting and business management at, at university. And I said, well, there's a problem, because I'm obviously picking up all the plastic in the rivers, so how do I merge the two? And what I did this year, it actually happened quite quickly, I focused on finding solutions to solve uh, pollution in, in the water. And so my mission really is focused around clean water, and I launched a nonprofit, and we now focus on launching innovations into the market that actually help clean, clean the oceans. So, a little bit of background behind us. Let me just take you to what I discovered once I'd made this decision that I wanted to go into, into plastics. I discovered that microplastic is made up of a disintegration of la larger items of plastic. And it exists in most ecosystems, such as rivers, oceans, and soils. And even in animals, we know they exist in fish, in seabirds, marine creatures now, and human beings, unfortunately. Have you ever asked yourself why single-use plastic has no expiration date? I mean, goodness me, what's going on here? <laughs> Something seriously wrong. Since 1950, we have produced 8.3 billion tons of plastic. If we continue on this trend, we are expected to triple plastic production by 2050, by which point there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. So I woke up with a jolt around my addiction to plastic, and yes, it is an addiction. I'm wearing plastic tonight, I mean, I, I can't help myself. I made changes around the house and in the business. I started having my coffee in cafes instead of taking disposable coffee cups away. Stainless steel bottles replaced plastic bottles. And washing powder and fabric soft I stopped buying and instead bought eco-friendly products such as uh, with vinegar. And vinegar I used to clean just about everything in the house. But my biggest challenge to date, and I'm sure you must be experiencing the same thing, is food packaging. You go to the store, you buy the food, and it's wrapped in plastic. And so I wondered how I could change this, because I didn't want to accept just being given plastic. I wanted to push back. So myself and a group of Dubliners, we are about 150 on a WhatsApp group. It's quite a big group. We are, I know this is going to be coming, it uh, might be a bit of a shock to you, but we are removing the plastic at the till to be returned back to the, to the producer. We are protesting at the point of source. We are pushing on back on plastic production. So far, I've addressed the personal issue around plastic. Let's take a closer look 
at the core of the problem from a wider perspective. What happens if I told you that recycling was a waste of time? That we have been set up to fail at recycling because it was equivalent to a linear model. Let me quickly take you through this image. In a linear economy situation, we have waste, we have a product that is used once, and it ends up in the bin. In a recycling economy, that product is used twice or three times, maybe four times if we're lucky, but also ends up in the bin. In a circular economy situation, that product remains in circulation and never finds its way into the bin. Recycling companies are not coping with the sheer volume of waste we are producing. Did you know that 9% of the 8.3 billion tons of virgin plastic that we've ever created has been, recycling, has been recycled? In 2018, China closed its doors to receiving recycling, no longer accepting import, recycling imports. Countries around the world were just about to discover the greatest problem ever, and that was how to dispose of this recycling at source in the country. As an example, Australia are stockpiling their recycling in warehouses. Can you comprehend? We just have no means of dealing with it. In other situations, we have countries exporting waste to poorer countries, such as Malaysia and Indonesia, only to be irresponsibly disposed of by being burnt on landfill, releasing toxic fumes and CO2 emissions into the environment. Sadly, this has come at a huge cost. We are smothered with waste in the world. And now it's impacting marine environments. Just this week, I don't know if you noticed or saw in the news, 100 kilograms of plastic was found in this whale. I'm an empath, so when I see this, I, I, I do cry, I'm not lying, I do cry. And unfortunately, my daughter has the same genes, and she saw this whale, and she cried this week as well. And I realized that we had to move faster and we had to do better. So I follow this, this crowd. I, I, I chat to them a, a few times. They're actually the two-minute cleanup group. And they posted this, and they said, we need to do better. And they changed their hashtag to five-minute cleanup. And I thought of other ways of what we could be doing to make changes. In any good relationship, there is a healthy give and take. However, the balance has shifted. We are overusing plastic, and we seemingly cannot live without it. So how do we change the dynamics of this love story? Let me talk to you about a plastic conference that's held each year. It's a conference where the plastic producers get together and talk about plastic innovations. A, my colleague, Ivana, she mentioned to me, she noticed that the majority of the plastic giants had not implemented circular economy principles into their business. Why so are the plastic giants not embracing moving away from virgin plastic and implementing circular economy principles into the core of their business? And this brings me to this, my point. If it weren't for the age-old lust for profit over planet, we may not be in this situation. There's a saying called, guns don't kill people, people kill people. What if I told you that recycling or plastic wasn't necessarily bad, but it was more how humans made, used, and disposed of it that was the problem? It got me wondering, how could we change the rules? How could we change economy? And I came to the thought, if you want to change economy, 
you change business because business runs economy. But how do we change business? We change the consumer. We change us. And with the work that I've done this year, I only started in June on this plastic mission, I realized that it takes a small percentage of people to influence and ignite change. And it all boils down to this. As consumers, we are the true leaders. As leaders, we do the uncomfortable things. We do the difficult things. We lead by example. We need to give up the unhealthy things for our own well-being and for the well-being of our planet because we have a greater vision for our children. There's a Swedish word, and I don't know if there's any Swedes in the crowd tonight, omtanka, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, that means caring and consideration. It also means to think again. I don't think we need to break up with plastic. I think the love story could continue, but we need to think again. How do we do this? It's my job to talk to innovators and startups, academia and investors around the world to find solutions to problems and act fast to turn this into a plastic revolution. The focus really is to see how we can turn plastic waste and implement it into a circular plastic loop. As a marine, as an amateur marine conservationist, obviously I'm dying to be a marine conservationist. <laughs> One day I'll study it. It is my mission to clear the oceans of plastic. It's a big mission. And I want to do that by 2030, so please join me. I hope that it, it does uh, happen. It's my mission to find solutions to the plastic problem. One where we find alter alternative plastic materials to replace existing plastic. One where we figure out how to treat plastic waste at source. And lastly, how we turn plastic waste into a commodity too valuable to throw away. To detoxify this relationship with plastic, we need to think again. We need to change the world. However, it's not going to happen with one person doing one thing. The idea needs to spread. I need people to join in on this mission. And so I encourage you today, if you want to go fast, go alone. That's easy. <laughs> if you want to go far, go together. We need to go fast, we need to go together, and we need to go right now. Thank you very much.